Hey guys, Brady here with your daily tennis lesson. So we're looking this week at handling pace and power from our opponent. And today we're taking a look at that idea on the backhand side. I uh, want to mention that we've talked about a couple ways to handle pace on the forehand. One being, you know, to shorten the backswing. The other being adjusting the racket path, going a little more vertical. And that could be said, you know, for the backhand as well. You know, if Mark feeds me in some power here, and I get a little shorter, and I try to just kind of flick up. Yeah, I could, I could get away with that, but I just feel like that, those ideas on the backhand are a little bit tougher. So a great way for, that I think to handle pace on the backhand to make you more compact and control the ball is to go to a slice. All right, so a couple things about the slice that help us handle pace. The first is that, like I said, the backswing is much more compact than our standard two-hand or one-hand backswing, okay? It can get high, but it doesn't go back very far. So simply by the fact that it's staying a little closer to my body means I'm gonna have an easier time producing a point of contact that's out in front of me, which is obviously very helpful in this situation where the ball is coming in a lot faster. So have a look at a couple slice backhands. I'm seeing some pace. All right, so I think you guys can see I'm 6'7". I'm making myself a little bit smaller. I think that's helpful as well. Help myself stay compact by making the body a little more compact. So that's for sure a big, you know, kind of provider towards getting me that earlier point of contact. Secondly, I'm obviously getting spin there. That slice spin gives me margin for error and not in the way that topspin does. Topspin gives me great margin for error because I can get height over the net and then have the ball drop in. Slice obviously stays lower over the net than topspin, but the margin for error I'm talking about is in comparison to if I play that shot flat or with zero spin. I think you'd all agree that as power comes in, if you strike the ball extremely flat, there's a great chance it goes long. Maybe you hit it a little bit late and flat and it's going out into the left side fence. So that, that slice spin is really an absorption of this power that gives me what I feel is a little more margin for error, albeit not a ton of height over the net. And third, you know, I think you'd agree. I, I always am a big fan of everything in moderation. So if if somebody's attacking my backhand over and over and the only thing I go to is slice, I'm pretty sure they're gonna keep going in on me there you know, with power. So I, I don't wanna hit slice all the time, but what I do like about the slice handling pace as well is that it slows the rally down. If he just throttles a ball into my backhand and I go slice, that shot now takes a little longer to get back over the net and if he tries to generate as much power every time as that first ball against a slice backhand, he's now taking a lot more risk. Because as we know, creating our own pace tends to be a little bit tougher than using somebody else's pace. All right, so a couple great points about the slice backhand. Helping handle pace is it's a more compact backswing, all right? We get that slice spin that gives us a little more margin for error in comparison to hitting a ball flat and then slowing the pace of the rally down when somebody's attacking our backhand with power tends to be a great idea. All right, so I hope that's super helpful. Please click like below this video and if you have not subscribed to our channel yet, please do so as well as check down below me in the description of this video. You'll find the link to three free courses Mark and I have put together I think you'll find those really helpful as well. We got a couple more videos coming later this week on how to handle pace around the court. But until then, be well, and we'll see you soon at Daily Tennis Lesson.